sir, but you're tuned into the Hip Hop Uncensored podcast with your brother, Old God and Sam. And if you're enjoying the content thus far, don't forget to leave a comment down there. And also, you can hit the five star rating as well to show us your appreciation, how much you love the podcast. Now, we were talking about um, private prisons and we were talking about, you know, the influx of Latinos and blacks in the prisons right now. And um, we always get into these type of topics here and, and I'm tied in with hip hop. But um, Sam Ant, you know, he dug up a video that a young brother from the Bay Area was going in on it and brought some facts that we want to bring to the people and talk about today. Salute to this young brother who did his thing right here. I'm sorry, real quick. I'll drop that off that he he really gave us some schooling on, on what's going on out here. I'm going to try to find his name, but I don't see anything anywhere. But we're going to talk about what he said, like Oga said. Ever wonder why you see the same stereotypes of black and brown people depicted in hip hop music? What if I told you that some of the biggest music companies are in cahoots with private prison owners? And that the rap music we listen to is not only meant to entertain, but to verbally and visually support criminal behaviors that funnel disenfranchised people into these private prisons. Lastly, what if I told you I have proof? In 2012, Core Civic, formerly known as Corrections Corporation of America, the biggest name in the private prison industry, contacted 48 states offering to buy their prisons. One requirement of eligibility for the deal was particularly strange, an assurance by the agency partner that the agency has sufficient inmate population to maintain a minimum 90% occupancy rate over the term of the contract. Wait, try it? Wait, what? What kind of legal and ethical measures could be taken to ensure the maintenance of a 90% prison occupancy rate? Now let's work together to connect these things. I'm sure you're a smart person. It won't be long. Let's do the work. In 2012, a mere 232 media executives were responsible for the intake of 277 million Americans controlling all avenues necessary to manufacture any celebrity and spark any trend. Time Warner, as the owner of Warner Brothers Records, can not only sign an artist, but since they're also owners of Entertainment Weekly, they can also put an artist on the cover by next week. You think you choose what you listen to, but do you? Both BET and MTV belong to Viacom. Okay, okay, now I know that's not news to some, but when the use of these media conglomerates is cross-checked with ownership of the biggest names in prison privatization, it's starting to get a little fishy. The largest holder in Core Civic, formerly Corrections Corp of America, is Vanguard Group Incorporated. Vanguard is the number one largest holder in both Viacom and Time Warner. Vanguard is also the largest holder in the GEO group, the second largest owner of private prisons in the U.S. The overlap in private prison slash mass media ownership is disturbing. Let's make this clear. The people who own the media are the same people who own private prisons. The exact same people. They make money from getting so-and-so from the hood to glorify the life they live. And they don't care about the impact it has on others because money is the motive. Then when the music influences others in criminal behavior, they make money from all the impressionable low-income people of color that are expected to go inside their private prisons. You can research these companies yourself, by the way. It's not hit. Now, if you want to take action and stop motivated racist schemes like this from happening, we need to create a platform where the real culture of hip-hop can flourish. Hip Hop for Change has employed hundreds of people with jobs that further hip hop activism in the Bay Area and are ready for expansion. They teach K-12 workshops that get children rapping, breaking, DJing, and doing graffiti as a means of positive, healthy self-expression. Amazingly, half of the 20,000 youth they've taught were for free. They don't turn down kids. They produce social justice events and support local artists who don't fit the corporate narrative. You can even listen to them every Sunday on Hip Hop for Change Radio on 89.5 KPOO San Francisco. They're using hip hop to advocate social justice and raise funds for causes that enrich the lives of historically oppressed communities. They want to create a platform where the community can access the authentic culture of hip hop. Don't only share the video, but make a difference and reach out to them. If you're in the Bay Area and you need a job, they've got you. If you don't want to be on the front line with them, then you can donate here. That donation is essential to keep their movement going. So help them take the game back and empower the community with the real culture of hip hop that is rooted in peace, love, unity, and having fun. Donate today on their website and visit them at hiphopforchange.org. Oh God, that brother said a mouthful. Hiphopforchange.org is the website. Salute for the information. 
And pertaining to the private prisons and the music industry, man, that's that's something that I think we can really dive in on. What was your thoughts on that, bro? Um, you know, I, you know, I think there's some truth, you know, to that to a lot of those claims there. And we always talked about that here on a podcast, saying um, if that will be the case, that's to say, if that's the case, if the media companies, you know, um, had stake in the private prisons, then you say, okay, maybe that's not a bad thing. But then you look at, okay. What are, what are the media companies producing? You know what I mean? You talk about he's talking about BT, MTV, which I'm not too fond of any of those particular outlets. You know, at this point, but um, when you talk about the labels, what we could go to, and we even seen uh, Leo Cohen, you know, come out and say, you know, on a Breakfast Club, the stuff that he said, and it it, it would prove that what this young brother is saying, what his research is correct. In my opinion, but I'm gonna take this stance on it though, because I feel like now that we know, what are we gonna do about it? All right, this is what we know now. So you know something, it's like all right, you know, the people, the army's coming, the Calgary's coming into town. Okay, so how do we stop them? So, you know, we gotta stand up though. Now now that we know this, now you're gonna have some people who are gonna be victim to this. Absolutely, but now that we know, what are we going to do? So, but I definitely, definitely believe it, man. It could definitely uh, be some truth to this, though. I don't put that past it at all. Nah, and it makes sense when you look at private prisons and the capital that comes from private prisons and who's sitting up in private prisons right now, and how it correlates to a lot of the the hip hop that we hear. And you look at a lot of the artists that are sitting behind bars in trouble for hip hop. NBA young boy just got out of prison uh, or just got out of jail. I don't know if he was in a prison, but mm -hmm. he's on house arrest right now. Just dropped the album today. Salute to him. Kodak Black's currently sitting behind bars. Tay K 47 is currently sitting, not Tay K. Uh, yeah, Tay K 47 yeah, yeah. is currently sitting behind bars. Who else is in there? Bobby Smurd is currently sitting behind bars. And who's profiting off of that while we see a six nine who just knocked down a whole gang organization mm -hmm. promoting a whole bunch of nonsense. Who's promoting and who's who's benefiting off of that? A lot of this makes sense. And you talk about a Leo Cohen. I pulled up the little bit of an extract that he said. I'll play that real quick for the people if you haven't heard it as it pertains to his artist and drug use and his place. He really doesn't give a damn. And it's proven. Here it is. Particularly on women. But I think it helped change the course of the crack epidemic. I don't know what's this opioid thing, man. Is is well, being so a crackhead wasn't cool would you, back then. Being what? a crackhead wasn't cool. Now it's it. They seem like they're they're making it cool to be drinking lean and syrup and. It's the most dangerous. It's the most dangerous and... thing that's facing, um, um, our society. Are you so, so why sign an artist that would promote that? Um, b because I, I I already answered that question. You weren't paying attention. Um, she asked me talent or issues and i said talent but I, I i have to i i can't give up on people i don't think that's hypocritical though you're, you're saying um, it's opportunistic yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah i got i got people to feed <laughs> um oh, i got a i got a i got a business to run <laughs> you're gonna make dame dash take this clip and call you a culture vulture We'll stop it right there that was there. an alley yeah. oop i forgot about that alley oop he gave we'll stop it right now i won't get you too mad oh my god I won't get you too upset. We know how he feels about that. If you don't, go back to our old shit. But it's obvious, man. It's obvious that people in high places, and we and we see the correlation between private prison owners, the music industry, the entertainment industry. He's saying that if they got an artist that could pop, or if they want an artist to pop, and they want him in front of the people, it's not hard for them to make him his Instagram famous, this, that, and the third, and put him on the front of Entertainment Weekly the week after. They have that kind of power, and mm -hmm. we know the media is going to stir anything the way they want to. They can paint a narrative the way they want to. It's the, next to the FBI, the media is the strongest force out here. And it is, yeah. When you look at it and how it's set up, dang, the lines are too parallel. It makes too much sense. Yeah, and ho hopefully, if you know the brother does hear this segment, um, we would definitely want to reach out to him. But reach out to us so we can bring you on, and you can talk about this hook line and sinker we ain't got to speculate we can go right to the guy and he can because i got a lot of questions Word. you know for this brother about you know some of his research and some of these companies but yeah man that's deep that's deep that somebody took the time to actually start researching because we everybody will say it but we never had the companies and things that really put you know um the magnifying glass on so excited about this one man hopefully we'll have him on the program real real soon hiphopforchange.org out of Oakland, California. Salute to everyone that's out there. If anybody hears our commentary on this, because we should be trying to put this on YouTube, if we can, 
hey man hit us up our emails are in the description box we'd love to have you on yes sir yes sir but you tune into the hip-hop uncensored podcast with your brother oh guy and sam man all right man i want to talk about ti and iggy azalea iggy azalea has been all but absent from the hip-hop scene the last few years but ti sat